Okay, so we've mentioned now a few times that in calculus we have these conventions around domains, right? Um, we we don't usually specify domain and codomain when we write down a function. Generally, what we do is we just write down a formula like this one here, right? Um, and and so in a sense, we're being a little bit careless when we do that, uh, but we we get ourselves out of trouble because in calculus there is. There's a convention that we're all working with, so we all agree on domain, okay? And so this, the assumption that you make is that your domain is the set of all real numbers. Unless, well, there, there's a couple of scenarios. One is you might be in some actual practical applied context where it doesn't make sense for a function to be defined for all real numbers, right? Um, you might be doing some sort of applied problem. Maybe you're trying to optimize a length, let's say, right? So we know that length is a quantity which can't be negative. It doesn't make sense to talk about um, a length of like minus five meters. So we wouldn't talk about negative length, so we would be in a context where we're only looking at positive numbers for input, right? Um, so sometimes there is a domain like that that's, that's stated. You have this applied domain. Which, which you deal with. Uh, but most of the time the domain is left implicit. And if the domain is not specified, then you check to see if there are any values where your function is undefined. Right? So if you've got something like a polynomial function, like this quadratic, it's defined for every possible value of x. So the domain is indeed truly r. It's all real numbers. Uh, but maybe you're dealing with like a rational function, right? Maybe you're dealing with something like uh, 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. And you realize, oh, wait, I can factor that denominator, right? And I can factor that as x minus 1 times x minus 2. So in this case, if I wanted to specify the domain, and one of the notations that people will use for that is DOM for domain of f. Um, and if, if you like, you can think of this as, as itself. It's, it's a type of function, right? It, it's a function that takes a function as an input and gives you a set as an output, that set being the domain, OK? So the domain of f is, well, there's two ways you could do this. Um, you could use this uh, set builder notation and say, well, it's a set of all real numbers x such that, well, what do we have to avoid? We have to avoid dividing by 0. So I can't divide by 0. Um, so that means x can't be 1, because 1 minus 1 would be 0. x can't be 2, because 2 minus 2 is 0, right? So there are two values of x that are not allowed. So I could write it like that. Um, if you want, you could also write it as an interval. You could say, well, it's, it's everything from minus infinity up to 1, open bracket, because we don't want to include 1, union, everything from 1 to 2, again, open brackets, and then everything from 2 to infinity. Right? That's another way that you could write that set. Okay? Another example. We could do something like this. We could do, let's say, g of x is the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay? Now, uh, again, we're working over the real numbers when we're doing calculus. We're not looking at scenarios where we might allow for complex numbers. Imaginary numbers are not part of the equation here. We know that. If you want to stick to real numbers, you can't take the square root of a negative, right? Because we know that for any real number, if you square it, the output is going to be 0. If you're squaring 0, otherwise the output is positive, right? So, you know, if you think about what a square root is doing, a square root is asking, you know, which real number, when squared, will give me this result? And of course, it might be that there are no numbers. So we ask ourselves, okay. We want the square root to make sense. Well, that means you need 
4 minus x squared to be bigger than or equal to 0, right? You want it to be positive. Um, maybe you like having the x squared out front. We've looked at inequalities already. If you if you switch the order, right, that's you're multiplying both of these by minus 1, right? You're flipping the sign. Remember that when you change the sign, the inequality reverses. Uh, this can factor x minus 2, x plus 2. We want it to be less than or equal to 0. So we draw ourselves our little number line. We know that there are two places where this is equal to 0. It's equal to 0 at 2 and minus 2. And in each of these three intervals that results, we can do test values and we can check and we find that it's positive here, it's positive here, and it's negative in between. And we want the outcome to be less than or equal to zero. So that means we're looking for the minus sign, right? We want it to be negative. Um, so the domain of G in this case So again, we could write it in set notation, set of all real numbers x, such that x is between minus 2 and 2. Uh, but of course, that can also be easily written as a closed interval for minus 2 to 2. Okay. Um, so this is typically how we handle domain in calculus. Right? If somebody gives you an expression like this, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, OK, um, are there any values of x? Are there any real numbers um, for which uh, the function is going to be undefined? Right? Are there any inputs that will not produce an output? I want to know what those are because I don't want to consider them. They're not going to be part of my domain. 